H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay. The rest of the people. Okay, cool, Sushil. So download the JBoss server and once after that, um, just like how you have configured the Tomcat server, you just need to configure the JBoss server also by using server stack and select the correct version for JBoss and point to the JBoss location. Today we will be going to deal with EJBs, so EJB won't work with respect to web containers. It needs uh, some EJB container and the EJB containers are available only within application server. So that's the reason we need to have at least one of the leading application servers. So currently the open source one is JBoss and we have 20 other application servers also like Publogic or Webspio. But currently, we will be going to use JWAS application server and we will be going to work on the EJP. Did you guys get a chance to take a look at the web service assignment? Click the diagram which I have sent. Okay, cool. Thank you. Did anyone verify the diagram? So if all of you guys have yeah, no issues, uh, actually this is not an urgent one, you guys can practice during the weekend or next week also, but uh, please practice this particular example, because this will be going to deal with all the scenarios, like uh, how to make use of the complex type and how to communicate between client and server by using objects. So here, save employee details, access a beam and from client and you are going to generate you are going to send with respect to object only and the right side part the business logic part is not required for you to do any changes for that only thing is you just need to add one class which is exception class and the exception class is used to handle the so called exceptions and here you need to write a web service interface. See the right side part, this is same as that of our Strut plus a Hibernate application. No changes. So here we are replacing Strut and we are replacing the front end also and we are just incorporating web service and you will be going to write the web service client or you can test it directly from your SOAP UI tool. So only additional point is you just need to create one exception class. So once after that, this is the request and response. Here you can see that we are sending get user data by employee ID, passing employee ID and password from the client. And you can see that the response has received with all the information from our database table. This one, username, which has retrieved all the information. This one is related to our criteria query. So if you guys remember the from salary and to salary and we have applied the criteria get employee details by criteria, get employee list by criteria. So when you have specified this criteria, you can see that all the all the elements, sorry, all the 
employees got returned and displayed into a list format. So finally this one is for saving purpose. So you are sending some details and at the server side it is processing the request and saving the details into the database and once after that it is finally responding with the generated employee ID to the client. So please practice this particular web service then only you will be able to understand web services properly. And this was uh, related with our log4j framework as well. So please integrate log4j or you are developing client side code or server side code. Krish, this is Sushil. Can I ask you a quick thing? Um, yes, Sushil. So, so, you know, uh, when I write the program, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I try to do a lot of cut tests. Uh, or I have to go back to uh, the program that you have done in the panel, you know, previously in the class. Okay. So I think my yeah. So my my question is really, is this something we should really not do a lot of copy paste and try to do it on our own, or it's okay so, to copy paste? Because one so, thing that I realized that if you do a lot of cut paste, then you know you don't really write the code. You just oh yeah. Like uh, that means you won't familiar with the class files and the classes first of all. Yeah, yeah, and, and okay. Yeah, I just wanted to hear you because I, I think, I think I suffer from that where yeah. a lot of things are there on the Google and you sometimes you can just search it and you know, I mean, it's yeah. a quick way to do it, but I think it's not the probably better way to yeah, do it. Yeah, even, even if you search in the Google also, normally what I, I prefer is, uh, I'll just take a look at the code and I'll write it on my own. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. copy paste means uh, you'll be able to understand the code, but you won't get familiar with the class names. If you type it on your own, you'll definitely get familiar with the class names and you'll be able to remember that. Okay, because uh, I, I see that actually when you do it, you, you do it uh, very, I mean, you know, you, you really are in the flow when you do it. Uh, it's not the same case, but... If, oh, yeah, I guess sir. if we do this, if we can, if any, all of us can do this, we can claim our first Java program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this yeah. is the, all the assignment for us. I think it's not a few hours, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, but I think it's a it's a good background to see. You know, it really shows you the end-to-end -end flow of um, one process, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, this is the, from start to end. So this is a good good background to see actually. Yeah. Yeah, after all, if you guys are able to practice this one, you will definitely get familiar with uh, web services. And also the error handling kind of stuff, so that also you guys are supposed to work. So just now, just like how we have handled with respect to SOAP fault or SOAP rank 3, you can also make use of that and write in our, in your custom exception. It won't take much time, it's just like uh, whatever the methods that are available in the processor, you are writing those methods again in your web service and making it as available, making it as available for all accounts. So the same methods, you are just specifying it here instead of, instead of business logic, you specified as this place, still it was available at this level only, it's just like interface access. Okay, let us come to today's class. Did anyone practice the web service program? Not the one which I have sent in the for the assignment, but just a small program. The addition or multiplication kind of stuff. Did anyone practice? Srinath, did you get a chance? Sheena. 
Yeah, please try to write at least one web service program by using our basic example, the addition or multiplication kind of stuff, and verify that using SOAP UI tool. Sandeep, did you get a chance to work on the web service program? The basic example. Uh, yes, Krish, I uh, did the basic thing. Uh, oh, okay. I just did an addition, uh, yeah, some kind of... Uh, oh, okay. Okay, you are able to access from the client? Yes, I was able to. Oh, cool, good. Did you guys get a chance to verify why EJB 2.1 is heavyweight container? Will we want to deal with EJB 3.0? But uh, you guys should be aware of at least why EJB 2.1 is discarded or why it was called as heavy white container. Then only whatever the differences that I have explained with respect to this 3.0, you will be able to understand. Please Google it for why EJB 2.1 is heavy white container. Yes, let us start today's class, EJP, Enterprise Java Beans. So we'll be going to deal with the 3.0 first. And before that, we'll be going to see what are the differences and uh, the complexities that are available with respect to the older version. That is EJP 2.0. The EJP Enterprise Java Beans is a platform for building portable, are scalable, or reusable business applications. <laughs> By using EJB, you can generate components. Components, nothing but uh, the business components. That's why we have seen a, last time we have seen about the web services business interfaces. So, before that era, in 1995 and all, you can say, so during the Java release 1990s and one after that those guys have developed the toilet for JSP kind of stuff. So they feel that um, if at all if those are only used for enterprise, sorry, web applications and they want something new that can span across the enterprise. So during the startup day they have released EJB, so which is a enterprise application or enterprise component. And once after that only, all the remaining stuff came into existence. Either you can say start the Spring or the web services kind of stuff. But during the start of this, EJB was uh, very much used. So just like your credit card verification, credit card verification kind of stuff. So the credit card verification, let us take an example credit card verification. See, all the merchants, all the merchants, whoever is going to bill for the client, they are supposed to validate the credit card first. So, instead of communicating with the each and every bank, what they will do is they will just go to the middle layer and the middle layer will be going to contact the bank and will be going to verify whether the credit card details are valid or not. So from the client or from the merchant, from the merchant, you will be going to deal with a component. The component will be going to deal with actual business logic. Actual business logic. The merchant, merchant will be going to talk to the component. So currently those are enterprise components because we'll be going to discuss over the web or you can say between two different applications or the client server communication. It's not only 
over the web, it can be used for all the different purposes. The components are available in different flavors. We'll be going to see that what are all the flavors that are available. But for our credit card verification, currently, currently all your banks, what they will do is they'll be going to place a middle layer. The middle layer will be going to write a component. That component is responsible to talk to the business logic and validate the credit card because. For each and every merchant, the bank cannot provide a separate service or a separate handler to invoke directly. So that's the reason we need to have a separate component in between the merchant and the server, the server business logic layer. So this is just like a small example. You can have several number of examples like uh, client place, placing several number of bits. So whenever you want to do an online shopping or uh, let us say that it's a bidding option, bidding option site and you will be going to place a certain number of bids and you will be going to auction for one, one particular item and that will be going to reflect it into your card and once, and once that item was auctioned or if it was win by someone else then automatically your card will get empty. So that means on the same item, on the same item here, you as a client working on that, and the admin, the admin has the capability of handling the same item. Because once the auction was won by someone else, the admin will be going to remove that particular item from your card. So these type of strategies, these type of strategies also will be going to use some kind of components. So currently we will be going to use the business logic components for that particular case. And in the same way, let us say in a client server communication. Client server communication. Client wants to send some messages to the server. Asynchronously. Asynchronously in the sense uh, the client won't expect any response. What he will do is he will just send a response to the server and whenever the server is interested or whenever the server is up, he will be going to get the message and he will be going to process the request or store the data or any kind of stuff. And this kind of mechanism also available with respect to our components, our EJB components. So what, what the client will do is client will be going to push the message to a pipe. You can say just like a normal pipe. The client will sit here. Server will be going to sit here. So these two are not in the same JVM. So they can be on remote JVMs like they can be communicated over the web or you can say if at all if they are working on the same project so they can be connected using the LAN. So what the client will do is client will be going to push push the message to a middleware server And on the right side, your normal server components. Your normal server components will be there. So whenever a client has sent a message, your middleware server will be going to receive that particular message and will be going to store that message in a pipe. So it will be going to store those messages. So once the server is up, let us say the server is up, it will be going to, what the server will do, the server will be going to listen to the middleware server. So, the server will be going to listen to that particular pipe or channel 
and if at all if there are any messages are available the server will be going to receive those messages and will be going to process those messages so the client server communication is very much important because uh, in uh, any kind of project it won't be going to work on a single module it will be going to contain several number of modules and we need a communication between different modules so here it can be a module 1 and here it can be module 2 but what we need we want the communication between module 1 and module 2 and if at all if the module 2 was not up the module 2 was not up or if the module 2 was not able to process the request at this point of time you need to have some kind of mechanism to hold those messages that will be handled by using a technology called jms java messaging service in your ejb modules in your ejb modules there is one specific beam that is available which will be going to listen to this particular jms and will be going to receive those messages and the jms has the option like if at all if the server was or the your beam was not ready it will be going to store those messages and whenever your server was up or your component was up it will be going to send that particular message this kind of mechanism it was handled by using java messaging service or else there is one other technology which is mq this is message queue the current this is not related to our ejb i am just explaining for your purpose The message queuing is was developed by IBM, and it is a paid one. To maintain MQ message queuing, there is a tool called Data Power. This is middleware communication tool. Data Power is used as middleware communication tool. So if at all if it is a big project, um, people will be going to use MQ, and if it is a small one, and uh, we don't want the synchronous communication because by using JMS you can only do asynchronous communication. And if you want, if you want the synchronous communication by using JMS also you can do, but uh, normally people will prefer MQ if at all if it is a big project, and uh, if you want. Uh, the logging kind of mechanism for all your messages then they'll definitely go for mq because jms it's not at all possible to take a look at the message once it has reached to middleware server but for mq you have the option of verifying the messages and you have the option of validating the messages and if you have if you want some kind of data transformation that also you can do with respect to your end But JMS won't provide those many capabilities. It will be just used only for storing the message and sending it down to the server. That's the whole purpose. Come, come back to our EJBs. EJBs they are business business components mainly used for for developing some component business components like uh, you can develop you can develop a robust application. or highly scalable business application or you can say a reusable application so by using ejbs or once you have developed a enterprise java beam enterprise java beam and deployed onto a server just like how you have deployed all your servlet for this application to a server your enterprise java beam application also will be developed will be developed and deployed onto a server but instead of deploying onto a web server you will be going to deploy it onto an application server just like your web container which will be going to handle all the requests all the http requests here in the application server it contains another module which is ejb container which is nothing but enterprise java beam container see ejb is a component or you can say ejb is a framework and it was up embedded with ejb container so both enterprise java beams and ejb container will be going to called as yes ejb framework 
your EJD container will be going to provide a lot of functionality. Or else let us take first of all what is the difference between web server and application server. Then we will come back and see about it. Until now we have discussed about servlets or JSPs or start framework or any kind of stuff. All the requests are handled only in terms of by HTTP. See, even yesterday also when we have used the web services, we have seen the soap requests are triggered by using the post method. So, your web container or your web server will be going to handle only HTTP based requests. So, whenever you want to perform certain business kind of stuff, let us say you want to call a method that is available on a remote server and you are only, only interested in getting the response in terms of objects or in terms of normal primitive data, then it is not at all possible by using your normal web server. Your web server can communicate only based on the HTTP protocol or the request are also will go only based on HTTP. And the response at the most you can receive only in the form of HTML, static page or dynamic page. And your web server can only be used as a container for servlets and JSP. Because it contains only web container. But your application server, your application server, web server is also a part of application server. So that means your application server consists of containers, be specific, web containers and web server. And it also consists of another container which is EJB container which is used for handling the business mode, business components. And it also provides several services. Your application server provides several services which are not at all available with respect to your web container. See, until now your web container, what it is doing, it is just receiving the request from the client and it is creating an instance and then directly handling it over to your servlet or JSP. It is not at all doing any kind of other stuff other than receiving the request and passing it on to your servlet. But your application server can do a lot of stuff. It has, it consists of several services. It has the capability of maintaining the transaction, transaction management, and it has the capability of maintaining the data sources. Data sources, nothing but uh, until now we have used normal JNDA, sorry, normal JDBC stuff. So whenever you have used driver manager or get connection, it will be going to retrieve only single connection. But your application server has the capability of holding a connection pool. So connection pool means which will be going to contain several number of connections and made it available to your application automatically. So it will, you can specify how many number of connections you want. See the connection pool is nothing but which consists of several number of connections and make it available to your application. You can just ask the data source. So data source also just like a name. You can ask the data source to get a connection. So then it will be going to get the connection from the connection pool instead of directly talking to the database. So during the startup itself, it will be going to allocate some number of connections whatever that you have specified in your application server. And in the same way, JNDI naming, naming and directory interface, Java naming and directory interface. 
I'll show you a diagram. Yeah. Okay, just now we are discussing about the services. So these are all the services that are available. On the top, it consists of two containers. The first one is the container, which is which will be used for handling all the HTTP requests, and the EJB container, which will be going to handle all your business components requests, and your Tomcat web server. This is uh, with respect to our JWAS uh, server. So your JWAS internally contains Tomcat. Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.